Well, good morning to those of you who are joining us on Facebook and those who have come to the congregation this morning. We welcome you to Oasis of Life Ministries. God's got a word for us this morning, so let's go ahead and proceed with the word of God. Father, we thank you for this word this morning, a message from your heart to ours. And help us, Holy Spirit, to open our hearts to receive this message in its fullness, in its truth, in its spirit. We praise you for it. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the truth of your word. For the truth of your word that we know sets us free. This morning we believe that all of us can be set free from any bondage, any burden. That we can walk in total freedom from sin, sickness, death, disease. We can walk free from all of it. And we thank you. Father, I pray for those that are here today and watching that they hear this message and no matter how we came into this message, we walk out free and clear and healthy and whole. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You got your Bibles? Open them up to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. And verse 17. <clears throat> now Jesus, this is all part of the letters that were written to the seven churches. And the Lord is talking here. In verse 17. He that has an ear, let him hear. Well, we've all got he ears. Right? We've all got ears. But we need to open those ears to the Word. We need to open those ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I think it would be good if we heard what the Spirit had to say. Amen. 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 To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receives it. Now Jesus is telling us that we can overcome. Notice he says, he that overcomes, to him that overcomes. We have a choice here. We have a choice to overcome. And he says he's going to give us something to eat of the hidden manna. I will give him a white stone. And in that stone will be a new name written. Now, to this particular church that he's writing to here, Pergamos, they were having a major problem with false doctrine. They had several, if you read this whole letter, they had several different false doctrines that this church was believing in. And it was costing them. Folks, we got to get to the truth. Amen. And so Jesus is saying, if you'll overcome the false doctrine, I'm going to open up the hidden map, the word of God. I'm going to reveal it to you. I'm going to bring you the truth. So he's saying, if we will listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us those hidden truths of the Word of God that will keep us on that level where we continually overcome the deception of false doctrine. Now, we, we've got to understand something, folks. There is false doctrine out there today. There is false doctrine out there today. It's coming from various levels and various places. And a lot of false doctrine creates fear. Think about where things are at this year, right here. We're in just about to go to December, finish up the year 2020, and I think people are in a hurry to see 2020 finished. 
and done. The problem with it is some of the things that have gone on are not finished and done. Hello? Amen. Number one, God's not finished and done. Amen. His word isn't finished and done. The blood of Jesus isn't finished and done. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit isn't finished and done. Amen. But we have been inundated since about February or March with some kind of disease. The news media all the time talking about it. Politicians talking about it. And even in the church. What's the main topic of conversation right now going on in the world? All over the world. It's about this virus. The damage it's doing, the people it's killing, the, you know, and it's sad that people are dying from it. Don't get me wrong. But Satan has brought us into a place of fear. Through what? False doctrine. We've got an avenue that will crush that sickness, that disease, that COVID-19. It'll crush it. Amen. What we need to do from the pulpit and within ourselves is start preaching on the truth that Jesus shed his blood to heal our diseases. Yeah. Amen. 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 We need to get a stronger voice than Satan's voice. And we need to overcome the false doctrine. Now look at Jesus here. He says, not only am I going to give you this revelation, I'm going to give to you a white stone. I happened to get a letter from Rick Renner this week. And it was very interesting and it really kind of enhanced me. I've taken what he taught there as the Lord has led me to put this in here. And he was talking about Revelation 2.17. And he said the actual original Greek text in there, it states, I'm giving them a stone of white. And he said, well, what's the difference? Not a lot, but a stone of white. In these days that this book was written, the Roman government was in control. And if there was a trial, somebody was accused of a crime or something, and there was a trial, they would pick out a jury, and as those people from the jury came in, they would hand them two stones, a stone of black, and a stone of white. And they were told to listen to the whole, all the evidence, and then cast their vote on a stone of black if they were guilty, a stone of white if they were innocent. And it's not like our system today where we have 12 juries, jurors, and the 12 jurors have to come to a unified front. It was popular demand. So if you had 12 jurors and seven of them voted guilty, that person was guilty. And it was all based on those stones. Jesus is saying here, when you overcome, I have seen and heard the evidence. And therefore, I am putting forth a stone of white to let the judge our Heavenly Father know you are innocent. Amen. One vote, Hallelujah. one stone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, there was also another time they used those stone of white and stone of black. <clears throat> and this is kind of interesting because the Romans did have elections for their governmental positions. And when somebody was running for their Congress, the voters, when they went to register, would get two stones, a stone of black and a stone of white. So when you went out and registered, you would register and then put one of those stones in the bucket. If you wanted that person to be in office, 
you would put a stone of white in there. But if you were rejecting that person, you would put a stone of black. So if a person got the majority of stones of white, they would be elected to office. So what Jesus is saying here is you've got my vote. And I'm going to stand with you and stand by you as you step into your office with that new name, the office of a Christian in my kingdom. Amen. So what we've got to look at here, folks, is, okay, he who overcomes. Well, let's find out how we overcome. Just turn the uh, page a little bit here in Revelation and turn to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. See, that white stone that Jesus is casting, that stone of white that Jesus is casting for us, He's saying, what he's saying is here, Father, they're innocent. I'm standing by them. I'm voting for them. Therefore, they deserve the reward. Hebrews 11, 6. It's impossible to please God without faith. For those who come to him must know that he is. Not just that he exists, but who he says he is. And that God is also a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when Jesus is saying, I'm giving you this stone of white because I know you're operating in faith and I know you're diligently seeking what you need from the right place. Amen? We got to get the body of Christ to stop being afraid of the rewards. Hello? We get so concerned about God bringing those rewards. I, I really don't see a person in this place right now that if God was to start to funnel money into you, it would cause, cause you to be greedy. See, you can be greedy without money. And here's the answer right there. If I think, like some do, that if you throw enough money at it, it'll correct the problem, that's free. Listen to what's going on. We need a bigger stimulus package. We need more of this, we need more of this, we need money, we need money, we need money. Folks, there's no, there's no money out there for the government to throw at this problem anymore. And if they do, they got to borrow it, and someday you got to pay it back. And who does that fall on? Us, taxpayers. Yeah. I've yet to see a wealthy politician stand up and say, you know what, I'll, I'm going to throw in a portion of my wealth to pay off the national debt. If that's happened, tell me, because I haven't seen it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him. Now let's move up to verse 9 here. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So who are they overcoming? The great dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan, the deceiver. He operates under a few names. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
and they loved not their lives unto the death. In other words, they weren't afraid to give a right testimony. People were being threatened in that day that if you were out in public and you talked about Jesus Christ, you could be killed on the spot. Now here's the question. Can we give a testimony before we see the results? Yes. Sure. Amen. It's called our confession of faith. So we can give a testimony of what the blood of Jesus did for us before we see the results. Amen? Yeah. So he's saying you overcome by the blood and what it did for you and by the word of your testimony of that blood. Now think about it for a moment. How did you get born again? You gave a testimony about what the blood did for you and then that blood got you born again. Amen. Amen. Why do we think that's going to change in the kingdom of God? over the most important matter of our life, getting born again, and then all the other matters of life we think are going to change the way things are done. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so, we got to understand, the way I got born again was by testifying of what the Word of God says that blood did for me. Amen. It washed me. It cleansed me. And it made me a new creature. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law <clears throat> by hanging on that tree. That's ours today. But we needed to give testimony to it for it to work for us. Go to 1 John, chapter 5. First John 5 and 4. For whatsoever is born of God. Now, are you that whatsoever that's born of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And everything in it and everything that's going on. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Even our faith. So if we're going to be the overcomer to get that stone of light, then we need to know more about faith. And we need to need that, we have to have that faith taught correctly without deception. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. A number of years ago I started, I changed companies and I went to work for this company. And uh, it was very interesting. My first day there, this lady came in and uh, introduced herself. She was the purchasing agent. And she says, I hear that, I hear that you're one of us. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> she says, well, what faith are you? I said, oh, one, well, my faith is in God. No, 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 what faith are you? Well, my faith is in God. And she says, no, I mean, Catholic faith, Presbyterian faith, and, you know, she went through a whole list, Baptist, and so on. I said, what does that matter? My faith is in God. And she just kind of walked away, scratched her head. She, she was, she'd been taught that there were different faiths, denominational faiths. That people who are sitting in church today have a whole lot of faith in their denomination, but very little in the Word of God. Where are we at? Our faith has to come from the Word of God. Amen. Because we are to be more than conquerors through Him who loves us. We are to overcome this world's system by our faith. So, turn to Mark chapter 11. How many of you want that stone of white before you leave here today? Amen. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus, answering, said unto them, Have faith in God. Now that also is translated, Have the faith of God, the God kind of faith. <clears throat> now he answered them, what did he answer? Let's go back into this a little bit. In this chapter, Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. They went and got him a donkey, an unused donkey, brand new donkey, nobody had ridden on it before. And he's on it, and he's coming into Jerusalem, and they're throwing their garments and all these branches and and so on before him, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're shouting these praises, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So he comes into Jerusalem. Verse 11. And Jesus entered Jerusalem and into the temple. So he comes into Jerusalem, goes up to the temple, gets off his donkey, and walks into the temple. Okay, And when he had looked round about upon all things, so get what's going on here. He's come to the temple. He spends the day there. Just looking at the activities. Just looking around. Didn't say anything. Didn't do anything. You see, the next day he's supposed to go preach there. He's been sent by the Father. So the Father sends him in there and tells him, search this out. What is he looking for? He's looking to hear from the Father. Are there going to be any hindrances to what you've given me to preach. Now he leaves the temple. He didn't do a thing in that temple that day, but look around. He walked out. And now the even time has come. And he went out into Bethany with the twelve. Now it's the next morning. And on the morrow, when they were coming from Bethany, he was hungry. How many of you know he was a man? He was a man in a nurse suit. In a physical body, he got hungry. <clears throat> and seeing a fig tree, and this is an important statement in this, afar off, 
Here's that picture. He and the 12 guys that are walking down the road towards Jerusalem. It's morning. A far off in the distance is a fig tree. And that fig tree had leaves. So he gets off the path and heads for the fig tree because he's hungry. And, and I'm looking this up. A fig tree will not have leaves until it has figs on it. The fruit. Because the leaves cover the figs to keep the sun from drying them up. Keep the weather off them. Keep them fresh. So he sees a tree, gets off the path he was on, headed for Jerusalem, and comes and moves the leaves and no figs. No figs on the tree. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto that fig tree. How would you like to travel with this guy all the time? Now he's standing there talking to fig trees. <laughs> Answering a fig tree. I, I can imagine. I can imagine a couple of the guys that did that fig tree say anything? No, I didn't hear anything. Did you hear that fig tree say anything? No, oh, I didn't hear anything. Well, what happened? They followed him. They're over there. They heard this. No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. His disciples heard it. And they moved on. Went back to the road and went back to Jerusalem. And they came to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple <clears throat> and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. What was he doing? They turned this temple into a sales facility. Praying on people who were coming in there to pray and, and working on them to buy their wares and their goods. <clears throat> and that became more important than anything else that was going on in the temple. He called the place a den of thieves. Well, what were they robbing? They were stealing the truth. They were robbing the people's ability to seek and pray to God. What he was doing was cleaning up this temple before he preached. The day before he was waiting, God, what do I do here? What do you want me to do? How do I clean this up? Because if I go in there, and I leave that the way it is. The deception of what's going on in this temple is going to keep the word from going forth in truth. So he cleaned it up. Then he preached. Verse 17, and he taught, saying unto them, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But you have made it a den of thieves. Now I'm sure that's not all he preached that day. But what he did, I, I wouldn't doubt he taught <coughs> prayer. Effective prayer. Telling the people, your, your prayers have been in, in, not effective. 
ineffective because we've got to have God's word and we've got to have God's anointing. Now why did he trust that fig tree? It was deceptive. That tree was standing out there among all the other trees and saying, come on, look at me. I've got something to give you. I've got something to feed you. And this is just like Satan. I've got something to give you. I've got something that will feed you when he's got nothing. He'll make it look like it's good for you. But when you get there, there will be nothing. And so he cursed that fig tree. Told it no man to eat fruit from it ever again. Verse 18, and the scribes and the chief priests heard what he had preached and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him. <laughs> because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, or the evening came, he went out of the city. Now to go out of that city, they walked the same path, and they went by that tree. But apparently, the tree showed absolutely no signs that night of anything affecting it. Okay? And in the morning, now it's the next day, as they passed by, they saw, the twelve disciples, saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed, it's withered away. They were astonished. They apparently didn't expect it. How long did it take for that tree to withered up? 24 hours. Right? All right. Jesus walking down the street, he could see it. It seemed to bother him that it wasn't withered up that night when he went back. He didn't look at it and say, oh God, I, I thought I cursed that fig tree, but I guess. I wouldn't doubt there was a little bit of poking going on among the guys as they were walking. And as you stand there on that 
road that they would have gone in, and you look just beyond where those trees would have been. It's a absolutely huge mountain range off in the distance. And so now he's saying, look, I did something small here with this tree, but your faith can do something even bigger with that mountain. If that mountain's in your way, if that mountain's causing you a problem, you can cast it out and get it out of your way. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things, those words which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. <clears throat> Therefore, I say unto you, <clears throat> what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Believe that you receive and you shall have. And when you stand praying, now he's giving us some fundamentals here for how our faith should operate. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Let's look for a moment at verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Well, do you have any desires? Do your desires line up with the will of God? Proverbs says, to the man who will keep my law, I will fulfill the desires of his heart. We have desires. Is it wrong to have a desire to be healed? No, that's the will of God. Amen. We wouldn't have any argument there. So let me go a little bit of another direction. Would it be wrong to live financially debt free? No. It's <coughs> God's will for every man to prosper and be in hell. Amen. So the desire to be out of debt and to be prosperous financially is part of God's will. So when you stand praying, <coughs> believe. So when does your belief have to be in place? When you stand praying. Well, now you've got to be down on your knees to pray. That's not what that says. <laughs> they don't stand on my knees. I stand on my feet. So I can stand up and pray. Now, you can kneel and pray. That's all right. There are several positions that physically that prayer takes, but folks don't make a religion out of the position you're praying from. <laughs> Pray the word. Our belief has to kick in when we pray and we believe then that we receive and we shall have. Oh, you mean as soon as I believe it's going to come to me? Now listen closely. Yes. It's released from heaven. But you got an interference.
appearance here. He's called the dragon, the serpent, the devil, the deceiver. It's all of that. Try to keep that, whatever you're praying for, from getting to you. He's trying to stand in the way of that. Well, if God produced it from heaven, how can he stop it? He can't. Now, let me say that again. He can't stop it. He has not got the power or the ability to stop it. Let me give you an example. God told Satan right in the beginning, I'm sending one. You may bruise his neck, but he is going to take and stand in your face, and he's going to change the world. Paraphrasing. Could Satan stop Jesus from coming into this earth? Not a chance. Now God had to find somebody in this earth, a woman, a virgin woman, a young maiden, who would believe his word. He found Mary. Talk to her. Wanted to know if he could bring Jesus in through her. And she said, be it done according to your word. So God sends your answer to healing, finances, whatever it is. He sends that answer. Folks, Satan can't stop it if you don't give him any ammunition to stop it. We've got to overcome it. How do we overcome it? By our faith in God's word and his promises. Amen. Let me ask you, did Satan stop any of you from being born again? He can't. But did he ever harass you to try and convince you you weren't born again? You'd be surprised if he didn't. Sure he is. Even after 30, 40, 50 years, he's still trying to convince people they're not born again. Folks, we just we gotta go by the word. Amen. We gotta go by the word. Jesus shed his blood. Not only for the new birth, but he shed his blood in so many ways, so many times, he covered every aspect of our life with that blood. And then when we come and we receive the new birth, the page that was in there, in a book, is absolutely blotted out and a new book has your new name in it with that stolen light. Amen. Jesus is saying, I approve. You know, you've heard these, these messages, I approve this message. <laughs> well, I believe God is saying this morning, I approve this message. And so I'm giving a white, a stone of white to this message. But when we got born again, Jesus put a stone of white before the throne. And God looked at that stone and said, yes, they're not my children. They're not part of the family. And anything I have, everything I have is now yours. 
It's yours for the asking. Amen? We don't have to wait. We, we sit here sometimes and it doesn't happen around here, but I've seen it happen. Somebody come up for healing. Well, it's not your time yet. But yet I've never seen anybody do that when somebody comes up for the new birth. Hello. It is your time, folks. Amen. It's our time. And right now, it's our time to take over what's going on in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You better stay at your feet. Thank you, Father. What is Jesus saying? I vote for you. And I'm putting my whole full support for you. Amen. Amen. We've got Jesus' support. Amen. So we pray for you, those of you out there Facebook land and YouTube and watch this and see this. We pray for you right now that this message is taken into your heart and you realize our God wants the best for you. Your God wants the best for you. He doesn't want us to walk around in sickness and disease or be afraid of it. He wants us to overcome. And when we overcome, we get that stone white. You're born again. You've already got that stone. Praise God. May the Lord bless you mightily and richly throughout the rest of these days. Hopefully, we'll see you again next week. In the meantime, Jesus is Lord. God bless you.